Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're taking a look at a pen. It's this pen. This is straight from Luxury Brands, so thanks very much to John for uh, letting me use this for the review. I got this from John at the... Um, uh, DC Pen Show, very recently. Uh, it comes in this box. This is actually a pen that has just come on the market. So I've had it for uh, right about a month, I guess. Um, so I've been using this quite a bit. Um, this is the Platinum Procyon. Inside all these boxes and such. Here's some stuff that it comes with. This is the, the pen in the box, a little preview. Uh, it comes with um, this little packet of stuff, which is neat. This doesn't come with any other pens. And I think this is actually just for the original... Uh, distribution of this pen um, and not something that's going to be in every one going forward. This is the uh, blue ink cartridge that they all come with. This over here. But these are kind of special. So these are a set of three inks. We've got a dark violet, we've got an aqua emerald, and gold ochre. Uh, and these are mixed inks. So platinum's inks are already mixable. They call them platinum platinum mix-free inks. Um, and there are, are um, all kinds of fun little like published guides and uh, recipes and that sort of thing. These three are pre-mixed, and the recipes are on the back. Look at that. How neat is that, huh? So for this one, you want uh, one part earth brown and one part Aurora blue, which is not by the company Aurora. It's a color called Aurora blue, which is a little bit distracting, but whatever. Um, aqua blue and leaf green, that's a three to one mix. So, and like some dilution liquid, which is interesting, um, which is just really distilled water really, but you can buy, I think, dilution liquids from various places. And then gold ochre, which has got uh, sunny yellow, earth brown, and cyclamen pink. So these are kind of cool and they're not for sale. So I don't think you're gonna be able to buy these anywhere, but. It looks neat. I actually haven't used any of these yet because I've still been rocking the original um, cartridge that came in it, um, which is the blue cartridge. Let me get this back. I'll put this back in later. Um, this is the uh, Platinum Instruction Manual about how to install cartridges and we use the converters and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's get all this paraphernalia out of the way. Um, this is the, the blue ink cartridge that it comes with, and I've actually got one of these in the pen right now. They gave me an extra, uh, which is awesome because I use a lot of platinum pens. And you can never have too many of these little cartridges. Here's the thing about platinum cartridges. Um, they're actually really nice cartridges for refilling. So if you don't have a converter handy or I don't know, you're doing something that's a little bit dodgy, like maybe you're mixing inks that aren't platinum uh, mix free inks or something like that, um, you can reuse these cartridges. If you look here at the front, you can see that there is a nice shiny ball in there, and this is actually sealing the cartridge right now, but when you pop the cartridge onto the pen, it becomes a real nice agitator ball, so you don't get um, uh, ink stuck in the back of your cartridge or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and also the mouths of these um, cartridges are real, uh, they're thick and they're stiff. So the problem with international cartridges when you refill them is eventually you'll wear out this neck piece and it'll crack and then it spills ink into your pen and that's not great, although it's you know, it's okay, but it's not great. These tend to last a really long time. So, you know, anyway, there we go. Cartridge talk. Um, the box is simpler on this than it is for the uh, 3776 line and such. Um, it has a nice shaped foam insert that keeps your pen all nice and safe. Actually, it actually feels like there's some padding on the bottom too. I can't take this out. Like, this is like, does this come out? Let's see if I can. Hey, that does come out. Is there anything else in here? Have I found a secret? No, it's just a piece of. It's just a thick piece of cardboard. Well, you never know. Maybe it was a secret. All right, put this aside. Um, so this is the pen. Let's zoom in just a skosh. And you can see that it has uh, some nice details on here. Let's take this little tag off that tells you some stuff about the pen, I assume, in Japanese. I don't really read Japanese. Um, it says Procyon here across the front in uh, small silvery letters. Uh, it has this very nice clip, which is not spring-loaded or anything, but it's still a pretty nice clip. Um, you can tell it's sort of folded over uh, metal stuff and not like a one-piece uh, solid bit, but that's all right. At this price point, that's kind of what I expect. Um, you have these nice end caps, which are domed. And I can see the dome, I think. Actually, let's put it against something real dark. There you go. Now you can totally see that dome. Uh, the bottom is likewise domed. It's a nice rounded off bit. Uh, the corners are nice and soft. It's not sharp at all. Uh, it has this nice silver waistband and around the back it says platinum made in Japan. So, a um, little bit of something about the Procyon. Procyon is the name of a star. Uh, it's actually the name of a couple of stars. 
And I that twigged something in my memory, and it made me go back to my bookshelf. Um, I'm a huge sci-fi fan, and I have been for a very long time. My dad started me off on sci-fi with, uh, I want to say Methuselah's Children, which is a Heinlein book um, from way back about people that like get on a rocket and fly for a long time. Um, it's a good book and a good starter. Um, this one is called The Star Beast, and it's one of like the youth series. Um, it was originally serial- serialized across several of these because it was kind of a pulp adventure. Um, and then this one, I don't know how long I've had this. It's I must have gotten it from a library sale, apparently. It was originally from the San Diego Public Library. There we go. Uh, I didn't get it from there, and it must have been sold because it has a price tag for $2.25. This was originally published in, like, 1953, but it's about this uh, this guy, John Thomas, uh, and his girlfriend, Betty, I think. Uh, and they have he's had this pet, like, this sort of pet has been living with their family, and they named it, uh, they call it the Lummox. Um, and it's just this like giant uh, four or six legged creature with a bunch of fingers and a bunch of eyes. Uh, and it ate a Buick one time. And uh, it's about the adventure they go on. And I am relatively certain that this beast's um, uh, people come from Procyon, which is, you know, kind of fun. So if you haven't read any of these, check these out. Um, they were um, great books for the time and remain good books now. So check that out if you like some sci fi. I mean, look at this. The pages are kind of yellowed. It's, uh, you know. Smells like an old book. There's nothing that smells like an old book. All right, enough book talk. So back to the Procyon pen. When you open this guy up, um, you'll see a few things. Uh, one is that if you can look inside the cap, uh, just a little bit, you might be able to catch the edge of the slip and seal mechanism. So this does have a slip and seal mechanism in the cap, just like the 3776s, uh, which will keep your uh, nib from drying out. And indeed, it has kept this nib from drying out, although I've only had it for about a month. Um, so, And I've used it a lot, so I, it wasn't really in any danger of drying out. Uh, now, you might look at this and, and um, say, you know, that looks an awful lot like the same nib that they use on the... Um, the Platinum Plaisir, uh, Plaisir, and the Preppy. Well, I have one of those handy. It's this. This is the uh, Plaisir, which is the upgraded uh, metal version of the Preppy. It's actually significantly lighter than the Procyon. I hadn't measured them side by side, but um, as you can see, these are not the same nib. The nib is significantly larger in the Procyon, um, and the section's a little bit shorter. So this is a little bit odd, and I'm not sure how I feel about it, honestly, because I think the Plaisir is an underrated pen. It's got this like weird blingy band, which is, uh, I think, going to limit the market on it, and it, it costs uh, like about 20 bucks. Um, but in a very nice pen... Um, it's very light, and it can get dinged up and stuff like that. This one is weathered very well, but it's got a nice long section, and I think the nib is fine. Now, if the nib on this is a little bit bigger, that'd be good because it helps you reach the, the page better, I think. Um, that's why I like the bigger size nibs. But on this pen, when you hold it, um, the section is actually very short, and so I don't end up holding it on the section much. I end up holding it kind of further back. Um, just to, to get to the paper because of this short uh, this short section. Um, now these threads, let me cap this guy back up. I will say, however, let's see if this writes. Um, here's some paper. Uh, I've been waving it around for a while, but still basically, yeah, good, it writes. Since all the waving around, um, I haven't used this pen in probably a months. I, I don't know how long exactly. It's been sitting over here on my shelf uh, being an orange pen, but I haven't been using it. So that slip and seal stuff really is the business. All right. Oh, right. Um, now, if you look at these threads up close like this, you'll see that they're all nice flat threads uh, and that you have sort of a slope that goes from the... Uh, uh, the thread area up to the body. So when the cap goes on here, this is pretty flush, but you don't have a very sharp step because it has this nice uh, this nice ramp. Um, and I tend to put my fingers on this uh, on these threads when I write, and it's actually pretty comfortable. I, I don't have any complaints about that really. Now my wife Audrey does not like that at all. She tends to hold a little bit further back, and so she's almost holding on the body. So if you hold further back on a pen, your press probably isn't going to be your jam. Uh, but for me, this isn't a problem. And if you hold up close, you can see it has uh, a nice lip there uh, before you get to the nib. All right, so other than that, uh, the nib here is actually pretty similar to, it's the same shape and such as the one on the Plaisir slash Preppy. Um, and if you know those pens, you know that they write very well. Those nibs are the best nibs, I think, for a very inexpensive pen. However, when you flip this over, it's a very different sort of assembly. 
So you'll see that the uh, there's like this square bit that bumps out from the bottom of the feed, and that is the filler. So this has sort of um, what I it doesn't seem to have a name. I haven't been able to find one on the the website or anything, but I'm calling it a shallow filler because you can get all the ink out of a out of a bottle of ink like this. There's a couple of pictures actually on the Platinum website. I'll put one up here now um, that show this. Uh, but you can fill it from here, so you only have to get this much of your nib. Uh, in the ink and it's pretty it's got a nice slant there so if you tip your bottle of ink over you can stick that in there and get every last drop which is kind of cool uh, because ordinarily you have to sort of submerge it up to like here ish in order to uh, to fill the pen or else you suck up a bunch of air but here you only have to get to here now I haven't tried that because this actually this pen does not come with a converter which is a little bit odd um, I would have I would have liked a converter but it does come with like um, four ink cartridges so and they're good ink cartridges so I think you'll be all right um, this, uh, while well, we're talking about the section and we've got it up close here, um, it is translucent. Uh, let's get the flashlight here right quick. Um, and so you can see through it. There you go. So you can't see the actual fins of the feed or anything inside. The, um, uh, that's all hidden by this plastic bit. Um, which is actually a good thing, I think, because uh, oftentimes you can see that feed. People get a little bit nervous because you can you can see the, the ink on the, the fins of the feed uh, like this. And so people think that that's something wrong or their pin is uh, leaking or some such. Well, they've cleverly hidden it in the Procyon like they didn't in the Platinum slash Plazier. So maybe that's in reaction to, um, you know, people getting nervous about the look of it or something of that nature. I know some people also think it looks a little bit messy to be able to see the, the ridges in there. It doesn't bother me, but I can see how it could bug somebody. All right. Okay. When you open up this pen... You'll see it's got uh, metal on metal threads. There's a metal piece here. The body of this pen, by the way, is aluminum, and then it has a variety of coatings. Um, there are five different colors in the Procyon line right now, and I imagine there will probably be, probably be more. I'll put a picture of them here. And uh, I picked this one. I think it is gorgeous, but I was... Um, I was torn between this and the porcelain white. This one is actually called Persimmon Orange, and um, it's a beautiful... It's a beautiful color. It's got this like sort of matte finish. It doesn't really have much of a texture, but you can feel that it's not perfectly smooth. It's got a... I don't know if y'all can hear that or not, but it's got a little bit of a... got a little bit of a texture you can hear. Um, also, of course, since it's got the metal threads, it is sealed in the end. Um, this is totally sealed, but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't eyedropper this thing. You generally don't want to eyedropper things that are metal threads, but also I'm on team don't eyedropper stuff anyway, so that's not a problem. Now, you'll see here that um, you can see how much ink I've used. I've used about this much. Um, and... Uh, I said I've been using this for a month, and I have been using it for a month, not every day or whatever, but uh, the other thing about this pen is that this is a fine nib. It only comes in fine and medium, as far as I can tell, uh, and this is a very fine nib. Like, it's pretty much, I would say it's like an extra fine. In fact, it might be kind of like an extra fine platinum nib. It is very, very fine. I have a, I have a medium platinum nib that I was using to take some notes here a second ago, and I really can't tell much of any difference between the medium uh uh, 3776 and the fine plazier. So this is a very fine nib um, and you can see it's marked fine here. That's all that's on the nib is the P and the F. That's all you got. So a nice uh, nice simple nib, one slit, no breather hole, etc, etc. All right. Okay, so let's um, let's do a little writing sample, set it next to a couple of pens in a pen tray and call it a day. Okay, so the thing I'm using to write in right now is uh, this. This is an idea book from uh, Kokio. This is uh, Tomoe River paper. Uh, let me kind of go to weight this side down here. There we go. All right. So uh, I'm going to write a line from uh, the back of this uh, this Heinlein novel. Uh, one of the fun things that this uh, the Lummox does is that it started eating cars. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to write the line. Uh, it ate the second hand Buick. As you can see, it had no problem starting up, even though I've been waving it around for probably uh, 20 minutes at this point. Um, just, eh, I cut these down a little bit, <laughs> hard as that is to believe. Um, it has no problem doing any kind of uh, 
like fast writing or whatever. It seems like the feed keeps up just fine. It's not scratchy at all. Um, and it does have a good amount of flow. This is a nice ink cartridge. I like this, uh, I like this blue that's in here. Uh, this is the one that comes with it, of course. Um, and while I don't usually use nibs this fine, I do like this one. I think if I, uh, when I buy, when I buy another one, I'll probably get that white one too. Um, I'm probably going to get a medium nib just to see how they compare. And I'll try to do a little comparison video for you here, but, um, this is a little bit fine for my everyday writing, but I've been using this quite a bit for my, uh, planner planning and for, uh, you know, other things you need to find nib for. So like margin notes uh, when I'm you know, uh, writing uh, notes for class and that kind of thing. Because you want to have a nice fine point uh, that's not going to uh, cause feathering or bleeding on bad paper um, or, uh, you know, do anything like that. But also you can want to get in the lines and make it like a tiny note. That's a tiny note that I just wrote. All right. All right. Let's stick it up next to some other pens so you can see some uh, comparisons and call it a day. Okay, so here it is next to a variety of other pens that I have in this tray here. Uh, and it fits somewhere in the middle price range for a lot of these. So uh, the Misrip for these pens, uh, for this uh, Platinum Procyon is 66 bucks. So you're going to find it online uh, at all kinds of retailers like today. It kind of came out like last night, I think. Um, and you'll find it as a street price of uh, $52.80. Um, if you go to Anderson Pens and probably some others, you can directly from that, uh, the product page, add a Platinum Converter because it doesn't come with one. And that costs eight bucks. That brings you up to like an almost even 60.80. So uh, that's it's pretty good in terms of a medium priced pen. Um, it's going to be more expensive than some of these and less than others. So um, here I have the Tactile Turn Gist, which is a very short pen. In fact, it can only use like a short converter because it's a short pen. Uh, this is the Twisby Eco, which is very close in size. Uh, so if you like the size of the Twisby Eco, here's the Lamy 2000, the Platinum Plazier. This is the Paper Skater from Atoya. Uh, you've got a, a couple of Franklin Kristoffs here in the 20 and the Model 3. Um, also, let's throw in a Twisby Go because I have one of those sitting here as well. So let's, uh, there we go. That's good. That's good. Uh, so a little bit longer than the Twisby Go and also like twice the price. Um, and then it's about uh, 50 bucks is 20 bucks more than the Eco. So is this a good buy for you? I mean, I think it kind of is. It fits in a very different realm, I think, than the Eco in that like if you bring this out at like a board meeting or something important, people are like, what is this? Uh, what is this weirdo like school pen they've got there? You break out a Procyon, maybe not this um, sort of salmon-y persimmon color, but it comes in black and blue and white and all kinds of other colors. This is a classy looking pen. Um, it doesn't have the bling factor that you get on the, the Plazier. Uh, so for 50 bucks, I think that this is uh, a pretty darn good buy. I mean, in that realm, you've also got things like the uh, Faber-Castell Loom. Let's put that in here. Uh, which is a great starter pen, one of my one of my favorite starter pens. It's like right in the same price range as the Loom, but the Loom is kind of a, a weird looking pen, and not everybody likes this guy. It's got like metal threads and stuff, so um, it's in the the Loom area and the like the Twisby 580 area. I think it's better than the Twisby 580 as well. Um, it comes with uh, let's go over through, through some real quick stats. It's got a steel nib. Uh, it's got a slip and seal cap. It's got a real shallow filling mechanism. You've got uh, a light aluminum body. It feels a little bit too light, if anything. Um, one thing I've heard from people that have handled it is that it feels kind of too light, which is weird because it's not. It's it's heavier than uh, than like the 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 plazier. I think it's. It's a little bit heavier than the paper skater. Um, so it's got more weight, I think, than people give it credit for. But um, people have been commenting that it's pretty light. I think it's like 27 ounces or not ounces, grams. Um, I'm not really, I, I don't have that number in front of me. Um, the length is five and a half inches capped, 4.7 uncapped, 6.1 inches posted. And the pocket depth, the all important pocket depth is 5.09 inches, so right about five inches. And this section is right in my perfect comfort zone of 10.2 uh, to 10.8. Uh, it has a slight taper. So there you go. All right. So this has been the Platinum Procyon. I think this is a pen that's definitely worth checking out. It has just hit the market. So you could be one of the first to have Procyons. Um, check these out at your favorite Platinum retailers. Thank you very much to Luxury Brands for letting me use this pen for review. And um, I will see y'all later. Peace out.